Hey everybody, my name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we're going through the book of Revelation. That's right, we're going through the entire book of Revelation online. Online, this is an online Bible study. Uh, we're just doing a couple minutes here and there. Uh, most of our segments are less than 10 minutes, and so we're just trying to go through it slowly just so that uh, you take it in bite-sized chunks. We're at Revelation chapter 6. Now, if you can believe it, uh, we've gone through five chapters of Revelation, and usually these are the easy chapters. Revelation 1 through 5, they're the easy ones. Revelation 6, this is where all the, all the symbolism and all the, I'd say, crazy stuff starts happening, but that's kind of true. When people start reading Revelation and they get to Revelation 6, they're like, oh, okay, I'm out of here. Like, this is, this is where it gets a little confusing. That's why we're doing this, to break it down, make it simple, make it easy to digest. And I think before we start Revelation 6, we just remind ourselves that this is John's vision. He's in the throne room of God. Uh, there's uh, God on the throne. God holds out the scroll and it says, is anybody worthy to open the scroll? And Jesus steps forward as the Lamb of God and he takes it and he is the only one found in all the universe that can open the scroll, right? And then around the throne, we have the 24 elders and they're bowing down, they have their crowns. And then outside of that circle, we have all the angels of heaven singing Christ's glory. And so this is what we see, you know, this is, this is the picture that we're looking at when we look at Revelation 1 through 5. And I think as we head into Revelation 6, Revelation 6 is gonna be all of the, the judgments against the earth. It's gonna be all the punishments. And that's a, probably another reason why uh, Revelation starts to get a little heavy uh, for some people or, and might turn some people off. But you know, one of the things we have to remember is that all through scripture, not just in Revelation, but all through scripture, there is a consistent theme, okay? You obey God and do his will, everything's fine, right? God takes care of you. you disobey God and you, and you live for yourself, you live in selfishness, you get, people get punished. That's where, that's where punishment comes. And Revelation 6 is literally the punishment of the earth. This is, this is the turning point, okay? This is where God's wrath starts to come. And, and with that, of course, we're going to see a, a lot of symbolism, but we're going to work through it, okay? And, and Revelation 6, this is the four horsemen. You know, when we talk about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, that's Revelation chapter 6. Revelation 6 says, I watched the Lamb open the first of the seven seals. That would be Jesus. He has that scroll in his hand. You know, he has that title deed of the earth. And he's going to start to make history happen. And he pops the first seal. And as he pops each one of these seals, something happens in time. And these are all the clues. These are all the signs that we look for when we talk about the end of the world, right? And then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a loud voice like thunder, come. And I looked and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow and he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Now, some would say, oh, it's the white horse. So this is Jesus. Jesus is not one of the four horsemen. Okay, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are all bad. These are all bad things that will happen. Jesus comes later. Right now, Jesus holds the scroll, right? So let's not, let's not get confused. Jesus is holding the scroll. He's popping the seals. The first scroll popped releases a white horse. Each one of these horses has a different color. And so this rider is a conqueror bent on conquest. Okay, you, You'll never hear those words used to describe Jesus. Jesus is not bent on conquest, okay? And so this would be um, just the foreshadowing of the Antichrist, okay? The one world ruler, the one who will rule the world. One person who will rule all the world with one world currency and like uh, basically a king over the entire earth, right? No more nations, no more, n no more nationality, no more, no more flags. A one world ruler with a one world currency. And when people ask and they say, hey, do you think we're living in end times? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Not when you read Revelation. Not when you see all the things that, that, that have to happen. You know, people talk about how bad the world is or, or the direction the world is headed. Like, we are not, we're not there yet, right? And so the first horse is this, this Antichrist. Verse 3 says, when the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature say, come. And then another horse came out, 
a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other, and to him was given a large sword. And whenever you see pictures of the red horse in art, uh, the rider is always uh, a warrior because uh, it's believed that the red horse is a symbol for war. That even though the world seems to be at peace and we're all flying under the banner of one king, uh, dissension arises, rebellion arises, and war breaks out and people are, are killed. Verse 5 says, When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in its hand. And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures say, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. So you might be thinking, I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Well, this horse is, um, is famine, is disease, right? Uh, and the third seal this is broken, and the rider steps forward, and one of the living creatures says, a quart of wheat, a quart of wheat. A quart of wheat would be what you would eat in a day. That's your, a day's worth of food, right? But then it says, for a day's wages. So a day's worth of food cost the same as working an entire day. You'd have to work an entire day just to earn enough money to eat for an entire day. That's bad. That's a bad economy, right? You're living in bad times. This is a famine. So first a world savior, then a rebellion breaks out, and then there's war, and then famine. Famine follows war. Verse 7 says, When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. And they were given the power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, a famine, and a plague, and by wild beasts of the earth. It was this last horse, the pale horse. The, the Greek there really almost kind of reads like a zombie horse. But it's, it's pale, but it's like a green uh, death color, right? And so this, it's like a plague horse. And so what follows famine? Death. And it says a quarter of the world dies. That would be like 1.2 billion people on the earth die. So one world ruler, and war breaks out, then famine, and then a quarter of the world dies because of it. Now, some would say, well, are the four horsemen on their way? Or have they already come? Like, is that an event that's already happened in the past? I mean, some historians can point to um, all these events that take place. I mean, you have the, the Crusades, right? The Crusades echoed this kind of conquest. And then you have the Hundred Years' War, right? And then the Bubonic Plague took place. So you could see some of those events taking place. But history has a way of repeating itself, right? And certainly, these big events haven't happened recently. They happen, haven't happened in, in our time. And so, absolutely, Christians who live during these times, they will experience death. They will experience disease. They will experience trials of all sorts. And the Antichrist will, will start it all off by making it difficult for them because the Antichrist will be against Christians. He will cut off the food supply of Christians and, and, and keep them uh, a persecuted people. But, and, and, and I know that sounds like it's you know, all doom and gloom and it would give us reason to be afraid and, and to worry and to fear, but you know, we can rest assured that, that Christ is going to restore all things. Christ is going to make all things right. You know, the end end of the story says one day, one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? Everyone. So Jesus is going to conquer death. He's going to conquer famine. He's going to conquer disease. He's going to conquer every, every, every evil. And we have that hope. We have that hope to look forward to in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you guys next time. Bye.